Hi, this is Harriet Grayson, your host and producer of Community Culture Showcase. Welcome, and although the calendar says spring, it's been a little rough on everybody, but we have wonderful, wonderful events coming out in the next few months to kind of welcome spring, almost early summer, and give you an opportunity to see our beautiful communities. And I have with me a wonderful guest, a guy I know for several years. He's got his hands in all kinds of stuff, just like me. That's why we uh, get along so well. There's no sense in having any minutes for downtime. Sleep is irrelevant. It's just time to have a good time and enjoy life. So with great pleasure, I introduce Jerry Fisher, the right. Executive Director of Jewish Federation of Eastern Connecticut. Right. And let me put in a plug about just your organization itself. Sure. Uh, Jewish Federation, obviously the name is Jewish, so there's a lot of activities that have to do with Israel and connecting between Israel and the United States and bringing young people from Israel to the United States to kind of get an experience about being here. So there is that very much of that Jewish connection, which is wonderful. And it spills over into Westerly and into, into South County in terms of uh, Rhode Island. So it has that big umbrella. But more, maybe importantly, in terms of its mission in life, it does an awful lot in the community. And so it is very much involved with uh, the poor and the homeless. It has a food pantry that is the second largest in New London. So there's that wonderful mission that is part of the Jewish tradition of giving back to the community. You know, the old Talmud right. idea yeah, of one yeah. person can save a million. You know, that whole yeah, idea, yeah. one person makes a difference. So you, through your leadership, have Thank given the uh, Jewish Federation a big, wide audience, well beyond what this simple title might in, uh, in, involve. So, Thank you very much. So Thank you, you want to tell us a little bit about what, what else I've missed in terms of Federation? Well, um, the Federation does a lot with interfaith, a lot with um, intergroup relations, a lot with trying to preserve the memory of the Holocaust and make sure that it's taught in the school systems. And this past year, we kicked off a program called Encountering Differences, where we want to have white students from rural high schools meet with African Americans from New London. We just want to kind of break down the stereotypes and realize that we're all human beings and we all have histories and stories, and they're all important, and they all need to be known. So we've done Encountering Survivors for many, many years, and we started encountering um, differences uh, this year. Uh, and next year, we'll, this was one semester, next year we'll kick it off for a whole year. We have three high schools this year. We hope to have five high schools next year. And we have five high schools in our Encountering Survivors program. Um, so we're involved in education a lot, especially around the issue of the Holocaust and now around the issue of understanding uh, African-American history and racism. Uh, as you mentioned, we have a food pantry. We also do a lot of case management. We're known as a place that all the agencies turn to for crisis intervention. Mm -hmm. When somebody has a sudden unexpected problem we're the agency they turn to, and we usually succeed in helping the people get past the crisis and not let it take hold of their life, and they can move on. So it could be something as small as helping someone to get a driver's license or a state ID so they can qualify for some benefits, to sitting down and doing a budget with them and getting them to realize how they, if they manage their money a little better, mm -hmm. it wouldn't happen again. But we also come through with cash assistance once in a while. If somebody is really having a problem, heating costs more than they expected. Right. Uh, we're a, a FEMA emergency food and shelter program agency. So we give out money for utility bills, not give out, we pay or help to pay for utility bills and for heating. So you're right, in addition, and it is an expression of our Jewish values. Mm -hmm. we're, an, we're an agency for the entire community. So the also what the Federation has done, 
which is really why we started to talk today, is a big film festival. Amazing. And a big film festival, and also uh, you've been involved, you and I have been involved with other cultural and arts programs that Federation has done in the past, the photography exhibition a couple years back, right. so that the Federation has a history of being involved in the arts and culture. So why don't you tell us a little bit about this uh, film festival? Well, the film festival, um, like a lot of our programs, we work with other organizations and other community infrastructure. Uh, so we did a, a beautiful show many years ago, Visas for Life, with Lyman Allen Museum. And then Lyman Allen hosted the Olive Tree Project, where Arab and Jewish Israeli women painted together. And uh, we had an exhibit of all of their olive trees that they painted. Um, and the film festival started this is our 24th year. Mm -hmm. It started with Connecticut College. Okay. And we um, used the auditorium in the Olin Science Center. And we had a young Israeli woman, Ayelet Price, who said, Jerry, I know we're small, but we could do a film festival as good as Hartford or New Haven. So I said, yeah, we probably could. And uh, she started it for many years, uh, Connecticut College helped us, continues to help us, and we, that was our first venue, was the Olin Science Center Auditorium. And then we expanded a bit and we got the Guard online, and uh, the Guard has been wonderful uh, with us. We usually now open and close our film festival at the Guard, which is a, a beautiful venue, and Steve Siegel and Jeannie Siegel help us tremendously. And then we added a couple of more venues, uh, Mystic Luxury Cinemas mm -hmm. in Old Mystic Village uh, came on board and he helps tremendously too. And then for a few years we were in Willimantic in their art center and now we're gonna be in Westerly right. at United Theater, right. uh, which is really, really good. And then we wanted a venue for really good films but we knew they would draw a small audience but we wanted to be able to show them, so BP Learned joined on. So this year we're, we're screening at The Guard at Mystic Luxury Cinemas, we're screening in Westerly, and we're screening in BP Learned. Right. I think I got them all. Yes. And in Olin Science Center. Right, right. So and we have Olin a lot Science of wonderful Center. venues. Lot, amazing venues. Exactly, exactly. And, and we open up May 6th. Opening, opening after Across the Waters. Across the Waters. A wonderful, wonderful Danish film. An amazing film. And it's a film that um, tells the beginning of what was a wonderful story, but it shows you how hard it was for the Danes to rescue the Jews. So this film is really about their first attempt to rescue Jews. When you come and see the movie, you'll see how it ended. A few people were rescued, but after this first attempt, they got themselves organized and Denmark and Bulgaria, the two countries in Europe that really did more than anything to resist the Nazis and to um, prevent their Jews from being killed. Um, and it's a wonderful film. It did screen in Mystic a few months ago to an oversold out standing room only audience. And we're hoping because of the success, everybody loved the film, that will also fill the theater uh, at the guard uh, for this opening event. Um, and then we're closing with a film that we just landed, uh, RBG, about Ruth Bader Ginsburg, which is a tremendous, tremendous film. And we're gonna show a short done by Todd Gibstein, who lives here in Groton. Mm -hmm. He was a photographer uh, with National Geographic, a career with National Geographic, uh, international award-winning producer of films that feature stills, stills with narration, stills with music. And he'll be showing a short film about his recent uh, trip to Israel, mm -hmm. which uh, he took over 5,000 pictures in, wow. <laughs> in 12 days, it yes, was, it was right, amazing. Right, right. right. Um, uh, but, you know, we, we've had tremendous luck. We've shown the life and times of Hank Greenberg. Mm -hmm. uh, we showed um, the Nuremberg trial. Right. 
Right. So we had Alva Greenberg, had Greenberg's daughter speak at the opening to that film. We had Senator Chris Dodd, whose father was a prosecutor at the Nuremberg trials, speak and run a panel uh, when we showed the Nuremberg trials. Uh, and then my film, Harvesting Stones, mm -hmm. opened at the Guard. It was the world premiere. And I just heard early this week on, on uh, Monday that uh, we've been nominated for two regional Emmys. So two Emmy Awards, one for documentary and one for writing. And that's very, very exciting. So Harvesting Stones was on public television. Yes, that's, that's how we that's qualified. Why, yeah. that, that's how it aired. Right. And is there some way that people can still catch it? Is it they, is can, they can call the Federation and buy a, a DVD. Oh, okay. And I'm hoping with this nomination that we might get a national broadcast of the movie. Okay. Which would be wonderful. If not, we'll get it into some film festivals and people will be, people will be able to see it. And it is, to just give a little highlight of the story, because it's Harvesting Stones is really about um, Jewish farmers in eastern Connecticut that came in two waves. One wave was in the late 1890s to the 1912, 15, 20, where Baron de Hirsch funded rescuing Jews, getting them out of the Pale of Settlement in Russia, getting them away from the pogroms, and settling them mostly in South America, in Argentina, but in quite a large number settled in eastern Connecticut. And then the second wave was a wave of Jews who survived the Holocaust, mm. came to the States, did not like living in the city, and were able to buy farms, also using Jewish Agricultural Society mortgages. And so the second wave was Holocaust survivors. And the movie is about the first wave and the second wave. Mm -hmm. And um, some remarkable stories are in that movie. Uh, and today, is, are there many farms left? There's still a few Jewish farmers. Yes, mm -hmm. there are. Ike Gagenson still raises animals. There's a couple of dairy farms left uh, in, in Lebanon and Basra. Uh, the Himmelstein farm, over 100 years of continuous, in, right. continuous farming and the patriarch of that family, and um, the son who's carrying on the tradition, they're both in the movie. Uh, quite a few people in the movie have passed away. Mm -hmm. it took me a long time to make this movie. Well, I'll do that. But I'm, I'm glad that I captured it. Yes, I'm, I'm absolutely. I'm glad that I captured it. It's, One of the uh, first TV shows I ever did was with Frank Himmelstein and talking about his family and the farm. There you go, yeah. And yeah. showing uh, film, films that he had for the 1930s video. That, th those movies are in my movie. Yes. So Frank, Frank was um, very generous in giving us his home movies, and we, we wove them into the film. Very effective, very effective. Was, and he, he, they do have a wonderful story, but it's also a story kind of interestingly about what happens to, regardless of religion, just family farms, and that he has a bunch of kids, and, and it's, it's a hard life, and they're... Well, they were fortunate. They were able to sell the development rights to the state, and that enabled them to keep the farm. Mm -hmm. uh, farming is not easy. Right, even with, even with tractors and mechanization, no. Far, it's a very farming, hard life. Farming is not easy. But Frank, he, he, you know, he's essentially growing organic vegetables now. Yes, yes. And he sells to a lot of restaurants. He sells to fiddleheads in New London. Mm -hmm. um, so I, can, I don't have to go up to the farm to pick up the stuff. Right. I could buy right. it at fiddleheads. Right. Um, so it, it's really nice. You, I, I'm trying to, um, you know, the film festival is international. But we always try to have some film from Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, when we started this festival 24 years ago, we started it because the film industry in Israel was really beginning to take off. Mm -hmm. Film schools opened, independent films were being made. Now, now in, you know, around the world, Israeli television shows are like the pilots or the models right. for, for shows. Homeland. 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 On Israeli. Showtime. And, yes. And, and, uh, um, the one about the psychiatrist taking care of patients, I can't remember the English name, but the pool in treatment was, um, you know, so we're happy that we did that. But then, you know, you discover there's amazing French films being made, right. Danish films being right. made, 
uh, films from South America. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so it, it, it's, it's international and it's, it goes beyond local ethnocentric. It's, it's human emotions. Right. When we right. do a movie about um, the get, about marriage and divorce mm -hmm. in the Orthodox world, it's really a movie about women and how they're abused right. and how they can stand up to the abuse. Right. When we do um, a movie about soldiers in Israel, it's really a movie about coming of age in the army. Mm -hmm. And everybody can relate to that. Right. You don't right. have to be any ethnicity to understand mm -hmm. what it's like to transition from your teenage years into an adult by going through the army. And in Israel, most of the kids wind up in the army. They do it. They, mm -hmm. and, and the beauty of it is they want to do it. Mm -hmm. They try to get into the good units. They try to be a certain type of a soldier. Right. So, um, yeah. It's, it's and this nice. year, we also have this wide array of, of uh, films coming out. Oh, unbelievable. And uh, some that are brand new, like uh, Gins the Ginsburg documentary is like hot off the, you, hot hot off the, off the yes. distributor's yeah, list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then some of them are a little bit older, like Amen is actually uh, more than 10 years old, but it tells a wonderful story. It tells a wonderful story, and it's, it's, it was a significant movie. Absolutely. And... Part of the beauty of a film festival, especially the ones that we produce at the Jewish Federation, is we get a chance to revive mm -hmm. films. Films that were brilliant, mm -hmm. well done, nobody saw them, so we're showing Amen. And, uh, and we're showing it in Westerly and we're showing it uh, at Khan College. You know, and it's a movie about Zyklon B. Well, yes. And how, how the man was um, horrified. At what, yes, the German officer who was the chemist who designed it and mm. developed it, wanted it, it was told it would be used to get rid of vermin, and in fact it was the, what used they to used to use. to Right, to kill yeah. the Jews yeah. and uh, the Russian POWs. Right. So that, uh, yes, and then they add in, that's a true story, that is a true story, and then they add in because that's what a filmmaker can do. It's not a documentary, it's a docudrama. Right. And so they add into the story about his going to see a priest, and the priest is well politically connected, and the pri priest actually brings the issue up to the Pope, and the Pope says, you know, it's just uh, he's got too many other uh, things going on and he's not going to take this one on. However, you see in the movie, in the back, you see the people in the Vatican, individual people, did in fact save, save Jews. Yes. Italy, Italy has a pretty good record. I mean, we like to, we'd like to know more about what the Vatican did and the Pope did. But Italy and the Italians as a country, you know, were right behind... Um, Bulgaria and Denmark, 70% of the Jews of Italy survived the war. And the Jews of Italy in the north of Italy in particular were rescued by priests. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's, there's, there's that. Um, you know, th then there's, we have a film we're showing, Persona Non Grata, about uh, Sugihara. Right, a you name know, that uh, most people don't know. No, but here's a Japanese diplomat mm -hmm. who, again, rescued Jews, right. saved Jews. And, and you have to realize in all those cases, they put themselves at risk yes. by doing this. Right. Uh, and it, it's, it, it, it's, it's wonderful because at a, at a film festival like that, we can bring to the attention of the public stories of moral courage. Um, most people don't necessarily take up arms against anyone, but it's very different than to have the moral courage to cry out and tell the world about what's going on. And it, it is not every individual can do it. It's, 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 it's too difficult. And for a very small minority of people, they felt it was their moral obligation as a human being to do something about an atrocity that they were witnessing. And I see, you see that in Amen, and you see that in the Danish film as well. Yes, oh, um, very much so. About and you see it in Sugihara. Exactly, you exactly. See, yeah. And what's happening is these people die off as the Holocaust becomes less and less a reality and more of a kind of like a, almost like a fairy tale. It's important to bring these things up to keep people uh, mindful of this atrocity because you never want to see anything like it again. And, and we don't shy away either from the difficult challenges 
that the Palestinians and the Israelis face mm -hmm. and that Arab and Jewish Israelis face within Israel. So we, we're opening with a short called Gesharim, mm -hmm. and it's a lovely little piece about a dance group that was formed in the Gilboa, a region of Israel that our community is very close to, where Arab young women and Jewish young women form a dance group together. And by virtue of dancing and doing folk dancing and ethnic dancing, right. establish relationships that right. would have never otherwise been established. Right. And we explore it also in Across the Line, mm -hmm. where a Palestinian and a Jew have human contact. Um, you know, you can always look at it um, from 30,000 feet up. Right. And when you look at it from that high up, it looks insoluble, mm -hmm. like it's just a really difficult problem. Or you could look at it at ground level, right? and you can see, as we did when we had the art show at the Lyman Allen and in Gesherim and across the line, that on a human level, the problems are being addressed mm -hmm. and being solved. Right, and, right. Um, you know, we, we want to highlight that as well. Mm -hmm. We don't shy away from the problems. We want to highlight them. The other film that uh, is of this Middle Eastern flavor is Insult, which was nominated for an Academy Award. Yes. And that is about Lebanese Christians and, um, and the conflict with Palestinians. It starts out as simply an insult out of something very small, and it bubbles up into something dramatic and a, and a major legal case. But the interesting thing about it is, is it kind of puts light on... Uh, issues that we don't see in the United States in terms of some of the stuff that goes on in Lebanon, that goes on in Israel, between other groups other than clashes between Israeli Jews and uh, Palestinians. I mean, there's right. multi-layers of craziness that there's goes <laughs> on in the Middle East. There's no shortage of, of um, unfathomable and impossible to understand um, conflict between groups. You know, it's, uh, I think we should be working towards resolving these conflicts mm -hmm. rather than exploiting them. Mm -hmm. So it would be impossible. Look, look at how long it took for the Protestants and the Catholics to resolve their issues. Right, right. You know, 30 years, 70 years, mm -hmm. two wars right. that lasted that long. Um, do we really want the Sunni and the Shia Mm -hmm. to fight for another 700 years? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I think we want them to figure out how they can get along because that'll help the world get along. Do we want the Israelis and the Palestinians to fight for another 70 years or another 100 years because the fight really started 100 years ago? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I think we want them to figure out how they can resolve their differences and, and move forward. And moving forward is the key. I mean, you can't... I, I, I'll never forget this. Uh, Elie Wiesel and Zygmunt Strachlitz were in the former Yugoslavia. And Elie Wiesel, who believes in memory, especially the memory of the Holocaust, right. actually said, after 700 years, maybe it's time to forget mm -hmm. and not fight over an insult mm -hmm. that happened 700 years ago. Right. You know, right. There's a time when you have to stop the revenge mm -hmm. and stop the payback. I think some of the uh, some of the real value of coming to this kind of film festival is your exposure to these kinds of issues, which we don't really see yes. up front and close. And when it becomes up front and close, that's yes, the key. We see the see, headlines, right? So here's an opportunity to see characters. Of course, they are characters. Uh, these are not documentaries, and about the conflict that goes on, and a realization that this is a very difficult situation. Um, and Israel as a country is even um, just a small piece of a much larger story oh. that starts a couple of thousand years ago. This is not something that uh, you know started no, when the state no. of Israel became a country 70 years ago. Right. This is issues that start th thousand and, years and, ago. And, 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 and the issues are not just Shia and Sunni Muslims. Mm -hmm. The issues are still the memory of the Crusades. Mm -hmm. The issues are still the memories of colonial powers. Right. Italy and Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. France and England. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, there's, there, there are, um, it's, it's a long, long, long and difficult story, uh, but exploiting the past for advantage, I don't think is the way to do it. I think the way to do it is to try and resolve the issues of the past and move forward. Just having people forward. sit down at a table and having a discussion would be a first step. Oh, so yes. I, and tomorrow is Israel's Independence Day. Mm -hmm. And uh, David Grossman said something very touching uh, either today or yesterday at the Memorial Day in Israel. He said, we have created a fortress. We have not yet created a home. Right. Beautiful. We have to create a home. Right. Right. And that requires peace. Mm -hmm. You know, there's an expression, shalom bayit. Peace in the home. Mm -hmm. If you don't have peace, you really don't have a home. Right, right. So, and we and we see all kinds of flames around. You know, the whole Syrian issue. Oh my God! Yes, yeah. all of this all pulling itself together because all of these countries are still are still neighbors. So, Israel is on. A, it shares a boundary with Syria and has had a long history of going to war with Syria and, and with Lebanon, Lebanon, and, Lebanon yeah. and Jordan's that sort of caught in the middle. Um, and the old story about sometimes you are the enemy of your enemy is your friend. So all of a sudden you see back back stories going on about Israelis and Saudis speaking together and perhaps coming up with some yes. ideas. Yes. Again, uh, it's because this has been a, a hot point. Well, there, there's also, unfortunately, you know, there there were in the last several hundred years, going back a thousand years almost. There was the Persian power in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. There was the Turkish power, the Ottoman Empire in the right. Middle East. Then there was the Pan-Arabism of Nasser and the Egyptian power in the Middle East. Right. And now there's the Saudi power in the Middle East, which is essentially oil money mm -hmm. is their power. Um, and Turkey and Iran both want to get back into being the dominant players right. in the Middle East. Um, and Israel is, uh, yeah, it's buffeted by all of these uh, wins. And I think they're right to kind of stay out of the fight right. in Syria. But they won't stay out of the fight when it comes to Iran. Mm -hmm. They're not going to let Iran establish a military presence in, in Syria. They made that quite clear in the past few weeks. So we'll see yeah. where, so this is yeah, like it's, hot times in the old town tonight. Well, it's, it's, it's a cold war that's getting hot. Yes, yes. And, and of course, it, it flames up now and then. And Syria has become a real sore spot because it flames, yeah, five years of flames? Seven years. Seven years of flames. Seven years of flames. And not just flames, but poison gas. Absolutely. Bombing. Poison the, gas. The whole barrel, destruction. Barrel bombs and... Um, Things that you thought you would never see again. Mm -hmm. Just Outlawed. indiscriminate murder. Killing, murder. Murder. Indiscriminate. Of and your own people. Well, that, that's part of the issue. Is, mm -hmm. it, is, it, is it really Assad's own people? Assad is an Alawite, mm -hmm. and he has an enclave on the coast. And he might not see the Sunnis as his own people. Mm -hmm. He might see them as legitimate targets, as he clearly does, to murder and kill. The, 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 the greatest irony when we talk about Syria is that the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum in Washington, D.C., I think three or four years ago, actually issued a genocide alert mm. for the Alawites. Mm. When it looked like the rebels in Syria might win, mm. they had cause to issue a genocide alert that if they did win, they might slaughter the Alawites. Mm. That's how much the hatred of one side to the other is so intense. Right, which we can't see when you're 30,000 no, feet high. No, so you, you, definitely want to come to the film festival because you want to see insult. You want to see insult? Absolutely. I, I can't think of a single film here that, 
you should miss. Uh, no, ab we would encourage you to see them all. You were on the committee. You yes, know. yes. I mean, you looked at well over 50 films. Absolutely, all kinds of films, yeah. documentaries. And some were terrible, <laughs> some were great. Right. Some were really great. You can't it was get all of them in. Uh, yeah. No, no, you it's, too, it's too much of a balancing but it, but act. It's, it's a good film, and the fact that we're opening with Across the Water mm -hmm. and closing with RBG, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, right. and a Todd Gibstein special right. short. Is, is remarkable. No, I we have a good, I, good, yeah. uh, good measure of variety here, yeah, which is yeah. wonderful. And uh, tell people how they can get um, so information you can, that you, you're reading off of your well, sheets. Well, you can, you can um, go to our website. Okay, so tell www us. www.jfec.com. Mm -hmm. uh, you can call the Guard or Mystic Luxury Cinemas, buy tickets for them. Mm -hmm. You can go to their websites and buy tickets for, from them. And uh, you can just show up at the event. Uh, I think we've gauged it so there'll always be seating okay. in each of the theaters. Right. So if you just come, you'll, you'll get a seat. Uh, we're going to have an opening reception, a uh, closing reception, and... Um, a couple of others in between, because after all, we are... This yeah. is a Jewish film you, festival. You've got to eat. And you've got to eat. You've got to eat. You've got to eat, so have something to drink. In, the we in Westerly, mm -hmm. Congregations of Charizetic is yes. putting out yes. a reception. Right. And at Mystic Luxury Cinemas, uh, Hadassah is putting out a reception for Maktoub, which, by the way, is an amazing, amazing movie. Um, so I think uh, I think it's a great festival this year. Right, right. It was, it was tough. I mean, we didn't. Yes. We we we, we, we went around and around. We and didn't around. have anything that grabbed us right away. Right. But then uh, we found pearls. Yes. Little pearls. Yes. You know. Yes. And then some surprises because uh, the people that actually do the the discussions with the distributors have a very difficult job, and and it's it's funny because it's. Um, the prices, for example, in renting these things right. change in yeah. terms of, you know, what's their value in the market? I, the I, real I market. need, I mean, I, I, that's the part that I'm uh, involved in. I need to get the distributors to realize that we're a small market mm -hmm. and we're a small federation. And, you know, if we get 400 people showing up at a film, that's great. They're used to having... 600 to 1,000 people right. when they show it in Florida or they show it in New York or Chicago or San Francisco. So we, we, get, we get most of the distributors to cooperate. Right. We also have a tremendous uh, number of good sponsors. Yes, why don't you tell us. us a little bit about that? Because the tickets... The tickets never, oh, they, never pay for the festival. No, it doesn't cover it. It doesn't, that, doesn't that, cover it all. I can tell you from just looking at the dollars and cents. Yeah, it never, no, never the, happens if that we, way. If we had to rely on the box office, yeah, we would, we would never do this. But, uh, you know, the Guard Arts Center, they, they give us their theater for the, for the two shows. Um, and then the people who do, do all of our printing, copycats, they give us a very steep dif discount. And then uh, Steve and Deborah Dyer and Alva Greenberg, Handel's Incorporated, the Lizer family, My Welling City, Nutmeg Companies, and Secor Subaru. They're all significant sponsors. Um, and as are uh, the Beechwood Nursing Home in New London, uh, the law firm Block Janney and Sisley in Norwich, Chelsea Groton Bank, um, Faye Clymer, Carol Curlin, Barbara Nardi Dean. Some people in our community, Kim and Ken Fishberg, Jennifer and Alan Friedman, who Jennifer used to be the chairwoman of the committee, and then some some good um, uh, businesses, East Lime Oil and Maxifocial, Maxilofacial <laughs> Surgery, <laughs> Levine Insurance Group, Malibs Jewelers, Preston Trading Post, uh, two more law firms, Sayet and Cedar and Sussman Shapiro, and the Waterford Group. They've all been good sponsors. Some of them are new, some of them are doing it for years. So, um, yeah. We and we're always looking for more sponsors. We can always, and you have until 
May 1st, yes, put, your, yes. put an ad in our program booklet. And the program booklet is actually a very beautiful, something that people keep because yes. it's well made, it's very beautiful to look at, and uh, we have uh, encouraging restaurants to be sponsors because we can put a coupon in the, in the, in the guide. Yeah, and then dinner they, and a movie. Exactly. Dinner and a movie. And even if they don't come and eat at the restaurant on the particular day of the movie, they can come back and, and use, use it. They can use the coupon anytime. Absolutely, and again, it's something that's really pretty to look at, sturdy um, and something that people will hold on to for a while right. just to just talk about the movies because it gets a little synopsis. Yep. Nice photo of a yep. high level movie. It's almost like that... Um the, the, the programs you get when you go to the theater. When you go to Broadway. That's right, you know, the play, like, Playbill. Playbill, it's like a yes. Playbill. It's yes. really good. And, and Mimi Pearl, uh, our office manager, she produces that stuff. She and does, does a she remarkably does a job. wonderful job. I mean, does we're talking about doing a lot of work at the Jewish Federation with a very small skeleton staff yeah. that, a, a, that serves a we're, lot we're of people. highly efficient. Yes. And we're all, um, we, we're, it's a flat management style Everybody does everything. That's right. They all, I mean, they all, they all, we all chip do in. everything. They all chip in. So I'm still looking. I'll be going around and harassing businesses in Westerly <laughs> to uh, be part of this great thing because for someone, a place like Westerly, this is a great event. We've had the great cooperation of United Theater and Maureen Fitzgerald from the YMCA to be uh, help us being a co-host, giving us the theater for that day. Uh, and it's uh, it's a big thing for them. They're, they're not. It's not something that they're open all the time. So it's a wonderful thing that they are cooperating with us. And we're hoping to have a, a wonderful reception by the local synagogue congregation, Sheriff Zedek, and it'll be you know lots of nice food. Again, this is sponsored by a Jewish organization, so of course we have to have something to eat and drink. <laughs> I mean. You know, our mothers would be very, uh, no, they would be pointing their fingers at us if we didn't provide these kinds of amenities. So you're not only getting a movie, you're going to have some fun. And I must say, every single movie is thought-provoking. We are not picking up some light kind of comedy fare that you, you know, you might catch at the 10, 10 seat, uh, the 10 theater cinemas. This is kind of artsy stuff. Much, but not all, are subtitled. Um, and you're really getting an opportunity to get an international flavor for what's going on because the movies come from, from literally all over the world. And we make it uh, our purpose when I sit down as part of the film committee to do a great deal of checking to find out, can we, can we balance it? Do we have something from South America? Do we have a few things from Europe? Eastern Europe, Western Europe, what about America? What about Israel? Uh, what about the Middle East? Can we get a nice flavor? Can we look at, we looked at Turkish films. Um, we looked at Moroccan films. We try to get a flavor for everything that's out there. And um, now because of things in technology, I mean, our distributors are worldwide. And it takes a, yeah. a great deal of effort. The biggest and hardest job is taking, all right, we see 50, quickly we eliminate about 20, and then we start looking at the 30. And then what happens, which is unexpected, is something like the Ruth Bader Ginsburg documentary that literally just became available within a, a couple of days before we made the final decision. Right. So those things, those things happen. Um, and then kind of the silly kind of stuff that happens, which is... Um, important in terms of making decisions, is something like The Insult, which is this Lebanese film, nominated for an Academy Award. So when it's nominated, it's a hot property. When it doesn't win, it's still a good film. It's just not a hot property. Very good film. It becomes affordable. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Affordable. Exactly. So what we do, we balance having an uh, international flavor. Uh, we do try to have at least something in English. And at the, other, at, at the other end, we have to kind of balance the dollars and cents because although we're not in this for the money, no. we must be able to cover our expenses. So that's part of being, and this is the stuff you learn not by going to see the films, but actually by being a participant in the film festival committee. And then you get to, we all share all the little intricacies of what it takes to put on a festival. And let me tell you, it's not easy. The members of the committee who work tirelessly, all volunteer, do it from love, absolute love, love of cinema, uh, love of our community, yeah. and this basic sense that um, it, this is a sharing opportunity to give people a different, a different perspective on places in the world. And, so. and, and the Guard and our film festival, we fill a niche 
that was lost when the Niantic cinemas stopped showing art films mm. and started showing only first-run films. Mm -hmm. We actually used to show films at the Niantic cinemas right. until they went digital and had to go with just first-run films. Mm -hmm. So we, we lost our art house. Niantic mm. cinemas used to be an art house. Right. And now it's the Guard and Art Film Festival mm -hmm. that bring art films to southeastern Connecticut and southwestern Rhode Island. Yes, yeah. absolutely. We're, we're and also at, sort of the, the in-between there is the Mystic, which uh, has periodic... They, they've stepped up. They've yes. stepped up. Mystic yes. Cinemas, that's just a natural fit for us because they do some art films every season. Right. They have a couple of art films, as does the Madison Cinemas. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, but for a concentrated dose, right, exactly. the Guard and exactly. us. Exactly, you know, exactly. The Guard gives you all of the um, uh, Oscar nominees, which mm -hmm. is a great series. Yes, yes, they do that, series. right. And, right. Uh, and we give you the foreign film nominees. Right, <laughs> right, exactly, okay. exactly. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So we're really happy that we're going to be doing this again. 24 years. What is the, what would you say if you go and you sort of take a look at 24 years? You've been involved with every single one of them. I've only been involved with the last three years. Mm -hmm. So what is the biggest highlight that you found from just overseeing all of this stuff over like a quarter of a century? I, I'd say there are, there are probably three highlights, one of which is I have my own self-interest in it. The first highlight was getting the life and times of Hank Greenberg mm -hmm. and having Alva Greenberg, his daughter, speak about it. Right. The second highlight was the Nuremberg trials. Yes, with Senator Dodd. With Senator Dodd. And then a panel. Yes. A discussion about about the Nuremberg trials. Um, we showed a film that wasn't well attended, but it was a film, it was a civil rights film. Mm -hmm. And it was about Goodman, Shorter, and Cheney. Oh, and, yes, the Mississippi and about, killings. Um, and about the uh, buses. And uh, that also had a, a very, very good panel mm -hmm. afterwards. Um, and then my film. Which, right. Right. Which turned out, I mean, so we've been nominated for two Emmys, but for me, uh, it's been shown around Connecticut, in Hartford, in uh, Fairfield County, in uh, the Madison area, in Colchester. And for me, it's very heartwarming because mm -hmm. for so many of those people, it's like watching home movies. You exactly. Know? Exactly. It's where they grew up and what they did. So that's, that's really sweet. Um, so, you know, I, I hope... Uh, We'll get another good 25-year run. Right, uh, right. You and I probably won't be involved. We in might not be involved. Right, 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 right. Visual learning is the new key thing. Oh, is that right? You know, people don't read books as much as they go to movies. That's right. Uh, That's right. I, even uh, my wife is an avid reader, so she reads. But when I want to see something or learn something, mm -hmm. I'll turn to movies on television or Right. On my iPad or something. Right. So I think the future for film is good. Um, and I also think it's still important to see a film on a big screen. Mm -hmm. So I understand how people can say, oh, I can get that on Netflix. Right. And I say to them, you can get it on Netflix. But if you sit in the guard or in Mystic Cinemas, it's a totally different experience. The other thing important about the film festival is that we're going to have uh, speakers at different points. And so it's not only merely just sitting in the cinema and watching it yourself, it's an opportunity to have, there will be some yeah, discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And on top of that, because it's a film festival, even if you're sitting next to someone you don't know, there's a, there actually might be this spontaneous kind of discussion that goes on because every one of these films is thought provoking. Everyone. Every one of them. The, the, some of the best uh, post-film things happen at our, at our film festival. The chatter in the lobby right. after the movie's over. Right. The reception it's is... Always, the, it's always exciting. Yeah. Always so you have a, we're having speakers from, from many of the films. Yeah. Um, and at the end of them, we're going to be eating and shitting and chatting. So, <laughs> there's, yeah. so it's not like watching it on Netflix. It's not anything no. like that. It's, and your phone won't ring. Right. And, we hope. Yes. And, you know... Uh, it, it, 
going to the theater to see a movie is still, I think, a transformative experience. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. You know, I agree. You know, and we've picked uh, venues that are um, quite, quite, in some cases, absolutely beautiful. The Guard, if no one has been to it lately, oh, is. Uh, you've got to go to the. If you haven't been to the Guard. It's a, it's, a, it's a make it's, it's a it's a must yeah. do yeah, a must yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Um, the lobby is beautiful, and then you go inside, and Everything there is, is this yeah. incredibly renovated theater. Old North African Moroccan style. It's decor. a wonderful opportunity yeah, to yeah. sit in a gorgeous old theater, yeah. Yeah. and on a much more limited and basis. And then when you go to BP Learning Mission, mm -hmm. and you sit in their tiny little theater, mm -hmm. super intimate, super small. Exactly, you know. exactly. Yeah. And we're very grateful that the United in uh, in Wesley, Rhode Island is being a, a venue because it's great they, that they're becoming a venue yes I mean, and we hope this is the I beginning, hope it's the beginning uh, of them along, showing films and, and bringing films to the community and a lot man maybe a, a long relationship with, uh, with the international us. film festival yeah, yeah. of course so that's that's always good in terms of having a little community like that involved in something much bigger yes and in fact uh, um you know, I have to meet and we'll have a discussion because with the people who actually operate the United Theater, because I don't think they've shown a movie in, in a while. So, uh, we'll, but we'll get it going. Yeah, we'll get, we'll going. get the technical stuff out of we'll the way. Yeah. Is there something else that you you know sort of want to add for what's going on? No, I think I think we're good. All right. Well, I'm going to urge everyone. We need two things for people to do. Number one, we want you to come to this theater, this film festival. So you have to get on uh, jfec.com. Go to the website, take a look at the calendar, see what you can see. There's some, uh, Ahmed actually is going to be shown twice, so there's an opportunity to see one of these, this really an, an extraordinary film about a terrible time and a man of two people who are really addressed in there, the scientist, who is a real person, and then this, um, this priest who wears the badge of the actual Jews, puts on the Star of David, and goes on the cattle cars uh, to the concentration camp when it becomes clear that he cannot change the, officially change the, ch uh, the church's uh, stand on what to do about the Jews. So I think that that's... Um, we're showing it twice because it has such immoral uh, importance. When we look around what's going on in the world today, it's so important, if you, even if it just inspires one young person to say, oh, I, I can make a difference. So that's the kind of the importance of the film festival. So we're really glad that you can see this film twice in different locations. And so that's really important. So we want you to come out to the film festival and see the movies. Uh, the Guard is just a... Beautiful if you've never been there or if you haven't been there in a long time. The, th the physical setting is magnificent, so we want you to come along. You can go to the Guard's web address, the Guard's Art Center in New London, Connecticut. Go to their web address, and you can buy tickets online if you want. Otherwise, go to the box office um, uh, either on um, May 6th, which is a Sunday afternoon, or June 6th, which is an early evening uh, Wednesday. event. Yeah, Wednesday. Um, you yeah. can go to the box office and buy it there. Same thing with the Mystic Cinema. You can either go online to their own, um, it's Mystic Luxury Cinema in Mystic, Connecticut. You can go online or Get, just go to the box office on the two different films that we're showing at the Mystic Cinema. And then at the other theaters, at the, at, uh, at the United Theater and at the uh, Olin Center. At Olin, the, Olin, Olin Center, Center in, at Connecticut College. At Connecticut College and the LP Learned Mission. Uh, that's step at the door and buy a ticket right there directly. And the other thing we ask for all you cinema lovers who want to continue to have this film, International Film Festival and others like it, uh, we always need your support. So if you are particularly a business in downtown Westerly, or if you're a business near the Mystic Cinemas, uh, we would certainly like for you to participate by simply buying an ad in our very beautiful program, almost as good as Playbill, which you would get in a <laughs> New, York, New York City theater. So it's an, a great opportunity to show your support to our community and to keep the film festival alive by becoming a sponsor. And if you have any other questions about being a sponsor, you can just get on the website, jfec.com, and um, someone would be happy to get back to you and have a, uh, have a discussion with you about your participation, different levels of participation. But again, it's a really nice kind of program to have your business known. So again, those are the two things. You gotta come to the film festival, May 6th through June 6th, 
different venues. Go on to www.jfec.com. Get the entire schedule out there. Um, it's a little hard for us on TV just to kind of give you a snapshot of everything going on. So go on the website and go ahead and do that. And that's really very important. And shout out, shout out to Jerry and his uh, Harvesting Stones, his documentary, which is up for these nominations. We wish him a lot of luck. Thank we you. hope he comes home with an Emmy. <laughs> and then we get even wider distribution. Right. We might have to show it again at the next International Film Festival <laughs> just because it's got all these awards under yeah, its yeah. belt. And it's yeah. an awfully good documentary because it captures a sense of, again, a time that is long gone. Right. It brings, it just like many of these Holocaust it also, movies. It also, I'm, I'm happy about the movie because it shows how refugees make America great. Mm -hmm. And the idea of keeping refugees out is so wrong. Mm -hmm. Refugees are, we're all refugees. Right, right. We're, we're all refugees. Right. From the original colonists mm -hmm. till now. Yes. We're yes. all refugees. Yes. And the idea that we shouldn't be welcoming refugees is it's un-American. It's, it's un-American. It's un-American. There's nothing it's short of being un-American. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's another plug, and we hope that people get an opportunity. Will, it, will there be another opportunity to see Harvesting Stones? Not well, yet. they can call the office to buy a DVD, yes. and then we'll find out what, how it's going to be distributed and what's going to happen. Right, because yeah. that's, that's a documentary that talks about a time right here. Right here. Right, right here. here and right now right here. and a real challenge. Yes, yes. And it was yeah. a, a, not always a great experience with people participating in it, but certainly it was um, people who didn't want to live city life. It was an introduction yeah. and, to and the country you, and, life. And you hear stories from Henny Simon and Ray Gawendo, two remarkable women. Henny Simon passed away a year ago and Ray Gawendo passed away around two weeks ago. Mm. And they both have beautiful stories that they tell in the movie. So, yes, and that is the beauty of lives forever. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's the beauty of a documentary yeah. like that. Yeah. It, li it lives forever. It lives forever. And their lives will then live forever. Exactly. Yes, yeah. and the story will. So that's really mm -hmm. great. So that's a wonderful thing about film festivals. All right, and film in general. So I want to thank Jerry for coming on today. My pleasure. And chatting with us, telling us about the uh, great International Film Festival. We want everybody to participate by. Yeah buying tickets and showing up at the right. door. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wish him all the great for the Harvesting Stones. Thank you. Go, 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 Jerry. <laughs> yeah. And also just to give a shout out to Jewish Federation for all of the stuff that it does for the community to Thank make our much. community better, yeah. um, for people who have little or nothing, as well as for the uh, general population that lives here. Been a longstanding uh, agency here in, in our community. Yeah. And so we, you know, it's maybe not well known. So let's shout out, shout out, uh, and give you uh, and the staff, uh, hooray, hooray. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. So I want to let you also know about some of the other great activities going on here in our community. Things that yours truly, Harriet Grayson, um, is involved in. One of them, as many of you might know, I am a uh, I, an author. I write these boring books on grants writing <laughs> and events planning under Harriet Grayson, but under my pen name, Anastasia Goodman, um, I write mysteries. And so I want to promote literature and people reading books, even if they read them on a Kindle. Uh, so I have created what we call literary salons. And I have gotten um, sponsorship by two local businesses in downtown Westerly. And we have been working with um, a pub restaurant called The Malted Barley. And we've created something called Literary Salon, Books and Brews, because The Malted Barley is famous for its craft beer and its incredible use of pretzels. So if you like pretzels, you can get a pretzel sandwich, you can get all kinds of food made out of pretzels, and maybe 70 different kinds of beers that are available. And what's the wonderful thing about it is the fourth Tuesday of every month, uh, this month being April, it'll be April 24th at 7 o'clock. You go upstairs to the Malted Barley, and we have local authors who are reading. It's an opportunity to, again, Im um, increase people's interest in our local authors. We have lots and lots of them. Um, and uh, they have a, a, a great um, number of books out there, fiction, nonfiction, memoirs, poetry. We have a thriving arts community in the westerly southeast Connecticut area, and I'm interested in promoting it. So come on, it's completely free. 
We would love for you to buy a couple of beers and some pretzels. And also, of course, the authors would love you to buy their books. But it gives them an opportunity to uh, read books and to talk about their books. Every month, we'll have a different uh, group of authors. So that's the literary salon, Books and Brews. We also, I've been working with the Tapped Apple, which is a great place. They make cider and wine right on the premises, again, in downtown Westerly. Uh, and they have agreed to have the third Wednesday of the month to host a, another author's reading. We have hundreds of local authors. And I am uh, a member of CAPA, which is Connecticut Authors and Publishers Association, and ARIA, uh, Association of Rhode Island Authors. And I've used these two groups that have hundreds of members to ask their, their, uh, our membership to come and be participate in this by doing some readings. So the third Wednesday of the month, um, you won't see this being broadcast now. It'll, ha it'll have to be in uh, May. But the third Wednesday of the month, you come on down, sip a little apple wine. He has wonderful little treats, little hand foods that you would like to eat. And you can hear um, a variety of writers, fiction, nonfiction, poets, memoir writers. Um, we've had historians come and talk about different um, activities that happened in the world. It's a great opportunity to sit and chat. After they finish, we can hang around, chat some more, chat with each other, and just have a wonderful time and promote arts in our communities. And the other thing that I'm working on, not that I don't have enough balls in the air, is to celebrate Bloom's Day the publication of the most epic, the beginning of the modern novel, James Joyce's Ulysses. Across the English-speaking world, they have the, we have the opportunity to hear and, and read James Joyce's Ulysses. So what we're going to do with the Savoy Bookstore in downtown Westerly, we're going to celebrate that day by having um, local authors read from Ulysses and also then promote whatever might be um, their particular book. So this is an all-day affair. June 16th, across the English-speaking world, we celebrate James Joyce's monumental book, Ulysses, which covers 24 hours in the life of Leon Bloom. So I want to thank everybody. And until next time, this is Harriet Grayson, your host and producer of Community Culture Showcase.